Now to do a question like this, I would encourage you to draw some kind of sketch. And what I've got here is my X and Y axis, and we'll have the origin just up here. Now, we've got the velocity vector of P. We're told that it's minus 3i plus 2j. And let's just mark on our unit vectors i and j. i would be a vector, let's just say, one unit long in that direction and j will have upwards, okay, one unit in that direction. So, they're my unit vectors i and j. So, if I had a velocity vector of minus 3i plus 2j, what's it going to look like? Well, we've got to go three units back in this direction and two units up, so it's going to look something like that. Now, this velocity vector okay is free to move okay we just got um, we, we can just move it around I'll just show you okay so if we take hold of it it's free to move it's still going to be three units back in the I direction two units up alright so that's our vector let's just put it there for the moment now what do we know we know that this particle P is at the point minus four minus 7 when t equals 6. So if we go 4 units to the left, 7 units down, let's say it's at this point here. And we know it's at this point, let's just mark minus 4, minus 7, when t is 6, so t equals 6 at that point there. Now if this particle is moving with this velocity, it means that it must have been coming up in a direction that's parallel to this, passing through this point. So it must have been going through somewhere along a path like this one. So that it's parallel to this velocity vector. Alright? Okay. Now, our, the question that they're asking is where was the particle, first of all, when t was 2? And we've got to find out where that, what that distance is from the origin O. Well, we know that t equals 6, it was at this point here. t equals 5, it was at this point here. Because remember, in every one unit at a time, it moves by this amount. So, at 5 seconds, it was here. 4 seconds, say there. 3, 2. It was about here somewhere. So, let's just put on that point onto our diagram. Let's just do that. Let's put it there. And we've got this vector from here down to here. If we could find that vector out, okay, let's just mark it in, say, brown. This is the position of the vector r when t equals 2. This was the position when r equaled 6. Let's just mark that in. R equaling 6 seconds. So we need to get this point here. And this is very easy to do. Because all we've got to do is say that to get to this point I've got to go along this vector and then I've got to subtract 4 of these vectors minus 3, 2. I'll run that through again just to show you. If we go take that back up to there, we've got to go down here and then we've got to take away 1, 2, 3, 4 and that will take me to that point there. Because there's obviously 4 seconds between t equals 2 and t equals 6. So if I take that back there, let's just work this out then. What we've got is that r, r at 2, after 2 seconds, equals this vector here. Now this vector is going to be minus 4, minus 7. I can write that as a column vector, minus 4, minus 7. And then we've got to subtract 
four lots that's t equaling four seconds because that's the interval between here that was where t equals two t equals two to t equals six take away four lots of the velocity vector which was minus three two and if we do that we get minus four plus twelve so that's going to be eight and minus seven minus eight is going to be minus fifteen so after two seconds this vector down here is going to be at eight across fifteen units down and that looks sensible according to the diagram here but we've got to get this distance and to get the distance or the magnitude of a vector we apply Pythagoras' theorem we think this is 8 units across here 15 units down so to get the hypotenuse here the magnitude or the distance then we can just put the distance from O okay after 2 seconds equals and it would be the square root of the sum of the squares of these two values. 8 squared plus, and we don't need the minus, the minus is just telling us that it's gone down 15 units. The length will be 15 there. 15 then we square that. And if you work that out, you're going to find that you get the square root of 289. And the square root of 289 is an exact value, it's 17. And the units are in meters. Alright, so hopefully you've uh, been able to follow what I've been doing. So just we go down here then and then we subtract four of these vectors which takes me to this point here. Alright, 